Hi, this is Cody Sawyers from Oregon 2020. Welcome to the intro to eBirding tutorial on submitting your observations to eBird. Once you connect to eBird.org, you'll find yourself on the website's front page. Make sure you're logged into your eBird account. If you aren't, you'll be asked to do so before the next step. If you do not yet have an eBird account, click on Register as a New User to set one up. It's free. Directly under the banner at the top, there are menu options. Home, About eBird, Submit Observations, Explore Data, and My eBird. For submitting your checklist, you click Submit Observations. The first question eBird asks is, where did you bird? There are a number of options here. If you choose the first option, find it on a map, then you can type state and county names to hone in on a location. In this tutorial, I will focus on this. The others are discussed in detail in the advanced eBirding, selecting your location tutorial. If you were to go eBirding in Benton County, Oregon, for example, you would enter the county and state name and press enter or click continue. You do not have to enter the county name to get a map to come up, but if you do so, you'll probably find your location much more quickly. You can move around the map by clicking and dragging. You can zoom in to find a more accurate location with the slider bar on the left-hand side of the screen. If you zoom in on the William Mel Finley National Wildlife Refuge, you can see a number of red tags appear. These are called birding hotspots and have been suggested by other users. If you birded one of these locations, then you can click on it and use it, but be sure it matches where you counted birds exactly. If it's not quite right, create a new location that better fits where you spent your time. If you click on a hotspot, the name will then appear on the right in the yellow area. If you previously entered personal locations, those locations will appear as blue icons. You can click on an old location to use it again. To create a new location, you can click on the exact point where you conducted your observation. It's best to zoom in as far as you can before selecting the location. By doing so, you get it exactly right. To help identify exactly where you conducted your observations, you can click Satellite in the upper right hand corner of the map. This will give you more detail about landmarks and may increase your accuracy. When you zoom in and find your location, click the map and a large green tag appears. You can then name it on the right. When naming a location, it's a good idea to use a unique name. Use the closest mailbox number you find for the street address or give the place a code number that makes sense to you. The idea is to avoid having many different locations in the database that are all named Finley Refuge. Instead, maybe 4550 Bruce Road or Bruce Road Stop 2 would be more exact. Whatever you choose to do, once you are satisfied that you found the correct location, you click Continue. Now you get to enter more information about your observations. Enter the date of your trip and choose the appropriate method used. Traveling is for observations taken while moving. If you go on a hike and count birds throughout, or do any sort of moving by bike, car, canoe, whatever, then that counts as traveling. Be sure to measure how far you traveled as accurately as you can. If you're driving, it's easy to check your odometer. If you're walking, canoeing, or riding a bike, it can be harder. Check out our other tutorials on how to use Google Maps to estimate your distance traveled. If you are conducting a stationary count or counting birds at two separate points without birding in between, you should keep a unique bird list for each location and enter them into eBird separately to ensure a higher quality of data. If you are on a trip or just going about your everyday life and you happen to see something that you'd like to report, such as a rare sighting while driving down a highway, then you should click Incidental. This indicates that birding was not the primary focus of your trip. Other options are available under the other pull-down menu, but most of these are specialized options for particular eBird projects not related to Oregon 2020. Once you click on the type of observations you'll submit, more options appear. You can fill out the start time as well as the duration in hours and minutes. Make sure you don't put the end time here. You should put the total amount of time you spend birding. You can also add the number of observers in your party and below you can add any metadata or notes about your observations. That might include comments about the weather, for example. Once you have filled all this out, you can click Continue. Now you can start to enter your actual count data. 
There is a list of species you're likely to see in your location with a box to the left of each species in which to put the number of individuals you saw during your trip. You can enter a number here, or if you didn't count individuals, you can enter an X to indicate that you identified the species. Be sure to enter an X and not anything else. eBird will not accept anything except numbers or an X in these boxes. The list is organized by relatedness, so species are grouped much as they are in your field guide. There is also a search bar on the right in which you can type the common or species name to navigate the list. If you know the four-letter code of the species, you can enter it here as well. You can also click alphabetic or group by most likely if you would prefer to navigate the list that way. Let's say then, for example, that you saw seven American Robins on your trip. You would either scroll down until you find American Robin or type American Robin in the search bar. When you click on the name of the bird, it will take you to its location on the species list. You would then type 7 in the box to the left of the common name. As I mentioned earlier, if you did not count the number of American Robins on your trip, then you would enter an X in this box. You can also add comments about the birds that you saw here as well as the age and sex, if known. For more information, please watch the Advanced eBirding Adding Details and Comments tutorial. If you can't find a species in the search bar or on the list and everything is spelled correctly, it's probably a rarity. eBird makes it slightly more difficult to add rarities to discourage accidental inaccurate information. For further discussion on adding rarities, please see the Advanced eBirding Adding Rarities tutorial. Accuracy of your data is extremely important. If you think you saw a herring gall but you're not 100% sure it wasn't another species, you should enter the observation as gall sp rather than risk entering incorrect data. eBird has conveniently included sp and hybrid categories for birds that are difficult to tell apart. Another example is the Canada slash cackling goose. Once you are done entering your data, you must confirm that you entered a complete checklist of everything you could identify. In general, you put yes here, then click submit. Now you have the option to review your checklist and change everything that you entered thus far. For more information on entering data on eBird, please watch the advanced eBirding tutorials.